going on everybody? Crypto Renegade here again with another video for you. And in today's video, I'm doing a follow-up and a part two video to the unboxing of the hardware wallet SecuXW10, which is their entry level device. Now this device retails for $99. However, uh, with in the link in the description down below with my discount Bitcoin lockup, all one word, just use that code at checkout and it will give you an extra 10% off. So this is the device here. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the setup, at the coin support and what the process is to get it going. So this is the device right here. Uh, it's got a 2.8 inch color touch screen. This is a USB connected device. So there is only one port and only one clickable button right here. And, uh, the, like as I mentioned in the previous video, this is really good quality plastic. It's very durable, um, you know. And just before the video, what I did here was the very first step, which was as soon as you power on the device for the very first time, it has you set a four to eight digit pin. You do that, you confirm it, and then it takes you immediately into setting up your recovery seed phrase, which is a 24 word phrase that is given to you. the The sheet is given to you in the box. Uh, and then it, you walk through writing down each of the 24 words and then step two is confirming on the screen, on the touch screen, confirming the 24 words in a row and that initializes and sets up the device. So that brings us to right here, uh, which is we're going to take a quick look at the at the device itself, how the interface works, and and how everything else works. Now, uh, I'll also have a second video or a part two video for the SecuX V20 coming out soon as well. That'll be in a few days. And then ultimately, I will have a wireless demo um, of the SecuX W20. So stay tuned for that as well. But let's just jump into real quick on, on how this works and how to set it up here. So it has the same chip as the... Um, same security chip as the Ledger Nano S and the Ledger Nano X have. Um, you know, it has a random number generator. It has, you know, some basic, um, uh, you know, security features that most hardware wallets have as well. Uh, and then, of course, it has the large touchscreen, which is really nice. Uh, it's quite an upgrade over uh, the Trezor um which has a very small touch screen, it's very difficult to manage. So having a 2.8 inch color touch screen is very nice, makes it easier to use. Uh, the one thing here as far as the coin support goes is it right now it's currently limited, but with new upgrades, there are going to be some new coins. And I think as soon as I plug this in and take a look with you, there will be a firmware upgrade that will add more coins. So the basic coins, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, Grossel Coin, Binance Coin, and ERC20 tokens. So we're gonna take a quick look at that. So. Uh, let's jump right in. What you'll do as soon as you initialize the device, you set it up and write down your recovery seed phrase. You come to this website, secuxtech.com, and then you just click on My Wallet up in the right corner here. And I'm going to plug in my device. Now, this particular device is web only. It doesn't have a Bluetooth. If you want Bluetooth or wireless connection, uh, you'll want to go with the SecuX V20 or the W20. Um, but right now, I just plugged it in. It's asking for my PIN, so I'm going and entering that in on the screen now. And I'm going to go ahead and click USB. Crypto Renegade, I'm going to go ahead and connect. Okay, and it says introducing our new uh, user interface, firmware 2.0. So um, it's telling me that I need to upgrade now to the latest firmware, so I'm going to do that real quick. And uh, it takes me right here to where I can click Start, turn on Upgrade Mode. Okay, and then it's asking me to confirm on the device and then reconnect it. So I'm going to click on USB, click on the bootloader, click connect. So now there's a progress bar on the actual screen of the device here. And 12%, um, 14% should just be a couple seconds here. You can also see the progress right here. It's mirroring as well. Um, and in this version, it's adding Digibyte, so it's adding that, and it updates the, uh, the new UI user interface and experience, um, and it also, in the previous one, fixed some bugs um, that were reported as well. So they are very on top of making sure that, A, they're adding new coin support all the time, and they're on top of fixing any uh, security issues or fixing any user interface issues or, or things of that nature. So that's one thing I really do like about this company is that they are on top of, of getting their, their any sort of fixes or bugs fixed right away. So 
As you can see, while this is finishing up on the left, it has your basic coins, as we looked at before, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Binance, Grosselcoin, and Digibyte. And it says the update is complete, please reconnect. All right, so I'm back here, click on USB. I am unplugging the device and now plugging it back in. Once again, I'm entering in my security pin on the device itself. And here it is, click connect, and we're back. So uh, what is nice about this is any changes that you make on the web wallet, you can view balances and things of that nature on the mobile app. So even though you can't connect and make transactions through the mobile app like you can on the uh, SecuX W20 and the V20, even if you just get this uh, entry level device, you can still look at your balances and things like that through your iOS app. So that's that's kind of nice as well. So we're going to take a quick look at just navigation. This is one of the simplest UIs or user interfaces that I've ever used on a hardware wallet. You click the gear on the right here, it tells you what your, your version is for your MCU, which is your, your security chip and the security element firmware version. And then update was the exact same screen we just did before. So we already upgraded it. Um, and as you can see at the bottom here, Digibyte's now been added. So just doing a quick uh, quick demo and quick look here. Um, you know, for Bitcoin, if I want to go ahead and add an account, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, test BTC just for this video. Click OK. And now it upgraded, it named that wallet test BTC on my device itself. So as you can see, test BTC. Pretty nice color touch screen. Just wanted to give you a, a visual of how that looks. Uh, and then uh, here you can rename it if you want to edit it. Uh, you can trash it if you don't want to, if you want to create more, or I'm sorry, that's if you want to go ahead and, and look at transaction history. This is updating the device. And if you want to send and receive, I just click on test BTC. I can send. Gives me either ability to scan a QR code, copy and paste the address, Choose my network fees. If I want to have it quick, I can do high, medium, low, or custom. And you can customize how many Satoshis per byte you want to do. Um, you can just leave it on the default, which is low, uh, if you're unsure about you know the Satoshis per byte that you want to use. And then receive, of course. So uh, this is a QR code that shows up on the device screen. So once again, I'll show you that. So there is a QR code here. So if you have a web wallet and uh, say you have like a a wallet on your smartphone or anything like that, you can scan the screen of this device here and it will automatically transfer it. So it has you confirm the full address on the screen. You can uh, click yes or no, um, and that's just confirming that what you see on your computer screen matches what's on the device screen to make sure that it is secure. So um, it, you know, just always double check the last five digits of the wallet address just to ensure that it matches, and if it matches, you're good to go. So um, I just click yes on the device screen and then done and then now I can go ahead and close out of this So if I want to set up for instance ethereum address, I would do the same thing um, I'm gonna do test eth That also now shows up on my device and uh, Same thing here, um, you know shows any balances. I obviously I don't have any I just set this up uh, I can edit it. I can trash it, but if I click on test eth this is here, I can do the same send or receive, but on the right here, I can do some ERC-20. So if I click on plus on the ERC-20 badge over here, um, in the dropdown, I can choose the token name. So here in the tokens, I can do BNB, USD coin, Maker, VeChain, TrueUSD, Zilliqa, Omise Go, ZRX, Chainlink, Holo token, and USDT. So this is actually really nice. I'm going to for instance, let's do if I have Tether or something, I can go ahead and click it here. It gives me the exact token contract so I can check the blockchain and then token decimals. You don't have to really worry about that at defaults. So let's say I wanna add USDT, I just click add and then close out here. So USDT wallets right here. Um, and if I wanna do just ETH itself, I can send and receive. So I can go ahead here and remove. Let's say I don't wanna have USDT, I just click this little X button and it removes it all together. So in this dropdown, you're gonna see more ERC-20 tokens being added on as well. Um, but these are just the default ones that are already in here. So if you have any of these uh, any of these coins, you can easily add it onto your screen as well. 
Um, just wanted to give you the option there for these extra ERC20 tokens. And then these are native apps that you can do for Ripple. You can do it for Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Binance, uh, Grossel Coin, and Digibyte. And they're going to be having more native apps as we go. But just wanted to give you a quick overview of the interface. It's very, very simple, very, very easy to use. Uh, what I do like is that the touch screen is very large. I can see the full address, um, you know, which I can't say for things like the ledger screen and, and the Trezor screen, which are pretty small. So um, it's a very nice entry-level device. With my discount, it brings it down to about $89. Again, the link and the discount code is in the description below. Um, but if you just have basic coins um, and, you know, and you don't need any uh, specialty ERC20 tokens or new coins, this is a very good wallet to start with. I definitely do like that it's simple, and I do like that it has the large color touchscreen that I can scan QR codes and send directly to it. So that's a very nice feature. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. I mean, this is your basic entry-level wallet. This is competing directly with, uh, the tre I'd say, the Trezor 1 and the Ledger Nano S. Um, so it, it definitely has some nice things that are better over that, although you know, you're going to get better coin support with Trezor and Ledger. I'm just going to be perfectly honest there. But the native apps and the simplicity of this web app here is actually very, very nice. So uh, I think that's going to be it for today. If you have any questions or comments about this wallet, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments. I'd appreciate it. If you liked this video, if you found it helpful in any way, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Any feedback is good. And then if you have any other videos or requests that you want me to work on, go ahead and leave it down in the comments uh, below, and I'll go ahead and uh, uh, give you a shout-out and reply to you. And, and uh, again, if you're new to the channel, uh, please subscribe. I do plenty of crypto product reviews, hardware wallet reviews, and other services that I've used to help spread adoption. So that's going to be it for today. Crypto Renegade out.